Okay, so now we have M1 from January 2018 IAL, question number one. So this is the first um, mechanics question that I'm doing now. And um, this first question here is all about statics. Okay, um, now let's just go straight into it. A particle of weight W is attached to C. So this particle here has a weight W. So let me just go, as I look, go along. So this, is, uh, this has a weight W. The weight acts straight down. Okay, so this particle has a weight W. It's attached to uh, it's to two light in inextensible strings, two light inextensible strings AC and BC. Okay, now light. That means we ignore their weight. We ignore the weight of these two strings. Okay, so there's no weight component from these strings whatsoever. Okay, inextensible means the tension throughout the string is the same all the way through. Okay, so from A to C, the tension in that string is the same every point. And B to C, the tension is the same at every point. Okay, so that's what that means, an extensible part. Okay, so let's now put those tensions in. Okay, of course there will be tensions in this string. Let me call that tension in the string from BC. And the string, tension in the string AC, let me call it TA. That's TA and that's TB. Okay. Um, the particle hangs in equilibrium, a uh, very important word here, equilibrium. That's the key to answering this question. When it says equilibrium, means that there are no resultant forces. All the forces in every direction cancel each other out. Okay? And um, with the strings in a vertical plane, okay, so it's just in one vertical flat plane, uh, with AC and BC inclined to the horizontal as thir at 30 and 45 as shown, and we've got to find in terms of W, so we're not finding an, an answer which will be a numerical answer, and it will be in terms of an algebraic answer in terms of W, because we don't know what the weight is. Okay, uh, the tension in both of those strings, AC and BC. Okay, so let's go straight into this. Now, first of all, what we have to try to realize is um, what we want to do is we want to resolve the forces acting on this particle, okay, horizontally and vertically. That's one way of doing this question. And we know that all the forces cancel out. So when I resolve hor horizontally, you know, the forces acting to the right, forces, forces acting to the left must be equal. If I resolve vertically, the, the forces acting up and the forces acting down must also equal each other. They must cancel out. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do in answering this question. So let's now make a bit of space here. Oops. See what I'm doing? Okay. So now, what I'm going to do is to make, oops, to make it a bit clearer, I'm going to get a line, make it a bit thinner, and I'm going to make it go across through C. And up a bit as well. Okay. That will make us be able to see some of the angles a bit clearer. Now, I know that the angle in this position over here must be the same as the angle over here, CAB, because AB is horizontal, this line is horizontal, they're parallel lines, okay, and you have a Z shape, they are called alternate angles, okay, so this is 30 degrees. And for exactly the same reason, exactly the same reason, this angle must also be, this must be 45 degrees because it's interior, it's alternate with this 45. Okay, so that's going to help us now to resolve the forces. So um, let's look at the forces acting to the right. Let me just, just draw a little triangle here just to show you. And from now on, you'll be able to realize something, something that will help us. Let me make that one in a, as a solid line. Okay, so we know that this is the actual force that's acting. Okay, this is the force T B. Now, this would be the horizontal component of T B, and this will be the vertical component of T B. This angle here is 45 degrees. Okay. Now, if I wanted to find the horizontal component, okay, this is like a right angle triangle. Okay, I would be able to use um, cosine. Say so cosine of 45 
is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse the horizontal component over TB. So that means TH is equal to TB cosine 45. So the horizontal component is equal to TB times cosine 45. And if I wanted to find the vertical component, I would use sine. Sine 45 equals TV over TB. So that means, okay, the, the vertical component, okay, is going to be TB times cosine 45. Times sine 45. Okay, so, you know, you can see that that's how we get the horizontal component. In this particular case, it's going to be the using cosine of 45 and the vertical components can be using sine of 45 okay so, so the vertical component will be equivalent to this line over here as well equivalent to this line over here okay that would also be the vertical component uh, what you can understand from that is something very important that will help us to answer these questions in a quicker manner is that whenever you're resolving a force and in order to resolve it in a particular direction you have to move into the angle you're given like here I have to move into the 45 degrees all right then I'm gonna say that this is TB times cosine 45 whenever you have to move in the direction of the angle given into the angle you use cosine whenever you move away from the angle you're gonna use sine okay and that's what we can see what's happened you're resolving horizontal vertically moving away from the angle sine Moving into the angle, we used cosine. Okay, that will help us with resolving forces. So now let's resolve the forces horizontally first. In horizontal direction, there's only two forces that are going to have any components. W is acting perpendicular to the horizontal, it's vertical. Therefore, the W will have no horizontal component. So you have TB acting to the right. So this means resolving forces vertically. Okay, so you've got TB is acting to the right. So you're going to have TB now. As we said, it's going into the angle, so it's cosine 45. And that's equal to, now TA is, move, is, is acting towards the left, okay, and it's going to be equal to T, TB. Um, the, the horizontal component is going to be equal because it's an equilibrium. So we can say TA, again, we, to, to resolve it horizontally, we've got to go into the angle, so we're going to say TA times cosine of 30 degrees, okay? Now we can just simplify this a bit. This is like cosine 45 is root 2 over 2. You can use your calculator for this. There's no problem, of course. And this is root 3 over 2. It's just that these angles, after a little while, you should be used to what the exact values are. Okay, But you can check with your calculator if you have to. So cosine 45 is root 2 over 2. Cosine 30 is root 3 over 2. So we can multiply both sides by 2. And we can just express it in this format for now. Root 2, TB is equal to root 3 times ta okay so i've expressed it in this form and see how i like to use it afterwards let's now make another equation by resolving vertically and when i resolve vertically i have three forces that are going to have some components in the vertical direction you're going to have ta and tb having vertical components acting upwards and w acting downwards so if we resolve the forces TA and TB upwards, like now if I want to resolve TA upwards, I'm going to move away from the angle that I've been given. The angle I've been given is 30, which is down here. So to resolve this upwards, I'm going to have to move away from the angle to resolve it in this direction. So I'm going to use sine. So I'll say TA times the sine of 30. And I have to add to that Okay, because they're both acting horizontal, vertically, they're both acting upwards. So I have to add to that TB times sine of 45. And that's equal to the downward forces, which is just the W, okay, the weight of that particle. Okay, so let's just get those values. Sine 30 is a half, so this is like TA divided by 2. Plus, and this is sine 45 is also root through uh, root 2 over 2 so that's root 2 over 2 times TB is equal to W simplifying this you get multiplying by 2 you'll get TA plus root 2 TB is equal to 2W okay 
and what we can do now is we can combine these two together all right this is like equation one equation two we can solve these simultaneously um, so if we write them next to each other we can we can even do by elimination here because we've got root 2 tb we've got root 2 tb so we, we basically have um, if we take this onto this side we have negative root 3 ta uh, plus root 2 tb is equal to zero you see that so if we now subtract these two equations from um, each other uh, we'll we'll have eliminated um, the tbs so we have ta minus I'm subtracting remember ta minus minus root 3a so that's ta plus root 3 ta is equal to 2w okay so you've got um, we we don't have to write an exact form if you want to no problem you're going to have uh, ta is common and you have 1 plus root 3 equals 2w so ta is equal to 2 over 1 plus root 3 w okay so that's ta uh, we can write that i think we should write that in, in um, it's rounded form because we weren't told to write an exact form so we'll take out the calculators and we will work out what that is where are we there we are we've got two two divided by um, one plus root three one plus the square root of three and we write that in its set form so that's going to be 0 0.732 w 0 0.732 w 0 0.732 32 w and you want to find what tb is well we can use the formula that we found earlier we know that tb is root 3 over root 2 ta okay so tb is root 3 over root 2 times ta okay so it's root 3 over root 2 times 2 over 1 plus root 3 well we really have this in our calculator so we just take that and multiply it by root 3 over root 2 root 3 divided by root 2 okay that would be the exact answer but they don't ask for that so we can write 0 0.897 w 0 0.897 w so there's our two answers so we can say the tension in the string ac the tension in the string AC is equal to 0 0.732 W and the tension in the string BC is 0 0.897 W. Okay. Now in these questions, they normally accept two significant figures or three significant figures, Okay. especially when you used M. We didn't really use M here. No, we didn't use, um, sorry, especially when you use G as, as 9.8. Okay, that's two significant figures. We didn't really use G here, but they will accept either 3SF or 2SF in these questions. So that's absolutely fine. And there we have question number one done. Okay. Thank you for watching.